Greetings again in Jesus' name. In this lesson, I want to talk about biblical righteousness. I think the misunderstanding of righteousness of faith that is imputed as righteousness, you know, faith being imputed as righteousness, stems from their misunderstanding of what faith is in salvation. See, they have the straw man that you have to be as perfect as God. And then anybody that's righteous or holy or not committing the sins listed in the scriptures that's going to disqualify him from the kingdom is perfect as God, don't need Jesus, and can save themselves and self-justify. Well, see, again, that's the straw man. See, the very first act of faith is obedience to the truth. So producing deeds worthy of repentance as your first act of faith coming into relationship with God to be reconciled, return to favor through repentance and faith, that is considered righteousness in the sense of righteousness being defined, didakasune, in the scriptures, as just. The, the, word, the same word for righteousness is just, just like Cornelius, it says in Acts 10.22, was a just man, meaning he was right before God. He didn't need to repent. Peter didn't go to him to, for he to repent just so he could receive an increase of the Spirit and further understanding into the gospel message of the time as it was inaugurated in the book of Acts. So it was just meaning righteousness, the dakasune, the same thing. It's simply defined as integrity, virtue, righteousness, rightness, correct thinking, right acting, simply doing what is right. Like John says, he who does what is right is righteous. Well, the first act of faith is doing what is right. Man has not been rendered incapable of doing what is right because he's a sinner. So all this business about being clothed in his righteousness, he makes you righteousness by this magic transfer, and Christ is our righteousness. See, that's not in the scriptures. In the scriptures, it says your faith is accounted unto you as righteousness, or considered righteousness. In the King James Version, uses the word imputed, and in some of the modern versions. It never says that Christ is imputed as righteousness, nor does it ever say that he makes you righteous or clothes you in righteousness. Christ is our righteousness in the sense that he's our righteousness, sanctification, redemption, wisdom, and redemption. As 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, yes, he's all example of those to set forth the standard that we're to follow after. Like Peter says, follow in his footsteps, die to sin, live for righteousness in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, 22 through 24. As I quote many times in my lessons. But see, righteousness of faith is just simply obeying God from your heart. The first act of faith is obedience to the truth. You obey it from your heart, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, having been set free from sin, became slaves of righteousness, Romans 6.16. 6, that's the first act of faith, and that's considered a right action acceptable unto God so that you can be reconciled in the blood of Christ can remit your past sins. It's not that your righteousness or anything, that you had any personal righteousness that you could merit anything. It's that you did a right act. You obeyed God because part of, part of the process in salvation is your faithfulness to God. See, and that I think is the big dilemma with the flesh kings are all saying that everybody's self-righteous and they're trying to self-justify in their sinless perfection and all that stuff. Is their flawed understanding of what faith is in salvation. They have you receiving Jesus, trusting in Jesus, repeating after me, going forward and signing a card, raising your hand in a church service, many, many different things. And then this magic transfer is supposed to take place and he's going to clean you up later. Well, that's not what the scriptures teach, see? There's a fundamental difference or a great divide, as I've always called it in my lessons, a great divide between us and them. So the reason we talk about righteousness and how it, how it works, the integrity, the virtue, the purity of faith working by love, keeping your heart pure from, from lust and filthiness, is because we understand that the first act of faith is obedience to the truth. So that is what it says when it, when it says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness in Romans chapter 4. And it's, it's what it's talking about here is where David's talking about the blessedness of a man that is declared in this condition without works. Well, he's talking about the works of sacrifices, of rituals, of, of burnt offerings, 
of appearing to days and in new moons and Sabbaths and all those type of things. He's not talking about the obedience of faith. Faithfulness to God was right from ver the very beginning with Moses. You love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, your neighbor as yourself. You hear these things, you do them. It's what Moses taught. See, nothing's changed at the cross. Nothing magically changed that our sins can now take this magic detour into Christ's body and that His righteousness can magically be applied to us. As I've always said, virtue cannot be transferred. Virtue is faith. Add your faith virtue to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. It just as first, Second Peter says, those things are the elements of a faithfulness that's revealed from heaven. The faith, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Romans 1.17 Faith to faithfulness, for the just man shall what? Live by his faithfulness to God. So when we say Abraham was accounted righteous by his faith, and it was accounted unto him as righteousness because he walked in the steps of faith, he did the deeds of faith, he obeyed from his heart. That's why. Not because there was some kind of magic transfer, or he just justifies the ungodly, and they remain ungodly. See, that's the major flaw, and the reason we have so much difficulty with you folks out there that have this misunderstanding and immediately, well, you're self-righteous. You're trying to save yourself. You're, you're saying sinless perfection. No, we're saying sinless perfection in the sense that when you've been scrubbed and cleaned and, and cast out and, and come clean in your repentance, that you're no longer committing the sins. Listen in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. You're committing those sins. You're not in the faith. Christians, real, genuine Remnant believers in Christ, followers of Christ in this dark day, do not commit those type of sins. Because final salvation is dependent on our deeds, good or evil. And that's another thing they're afraid to say. Even though they say they don't believe in eternal security, they still won't clarify that your final salvation is dependent upon deeds done good or evil. Just like Jesus said in John 5, 28 and 29. There's going to be the resurrection of the just in the unjust. Those that done good, the resurrection of life. Those that done evil, the resurrection of condemnation. Evil and good are actions that you do in your body. Not something dwelling in your flesh, not something that takes you captive, not a malady called sin. No, it's what you do in the flesh. That's why Paul says again in Romans 2, 7 and 8, where he totally agrees with what Jesus said there in that John passage I just said, by patient continuance. He's going to reward those with eternal life who by patient continuance in what? Doing good. Good. Being righteous, being pure, being integrity, upright, being your conscience clear before God and man, walking in purity. The continue in the faith. Those who by patient continuance in doing good inherit glory, honor, and immortality. Those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but what? Obey on righteousness, will receive indignation and wrath. So it depends on what you do. The, the, the gift, the free gift, like Romans chapter 5, is talking about remission of past sins. Like Romans 3.25, sins previously committed. There's no such thing as past, present, and future sins remitted when you come to the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ applies to your past sins. Of that only can happen through the blood of Christ in the repentance and faith proven by deeds, in your obedience to the truth. Now, if you still want to call that works, I mean, you can call it works, but that's what the scriptures teach. It's not magic. It's not trusting. It's not receiving. It's doing what Christ has said to do, what God has said to do. The, repentance is a command. It's not a gift, as most of these people out here in the blogs are trying to tell you. Repentance is a command. It's an imperative command given with the imperative that is to immediately be obeyed or just walk away, go away from it. One or the other, it's your choice. So repentance and faith proven by deeds, then the free gift of remission of past sins through the blood of Christ can take place. You can be reconciled. Then in faithfulness, like the just shall live by his faithfulness to God, the just man, the just man that was made righteous, just did not get sail, meaning just righteousness or just, lives by his faithfulness to God throughout the rest of his life. So final salvation, the reward, and reward is eternal life, 
There's no series of rewards. There's no sliding scale. There's no uh, uh, lesser lesser degrees of 